to episode five. Uh, today we're going to take a quick look at the circuit diagram for the bot. Uh, there's lots of stuff being printed, there'll be a construction uh, video uh, out shortly. However, right now let's take a look at the actual circuit that we're going to build. Well, hello everyone. Uh, here we are with the breadboard layout of the self-balancing robot. I've been using this application called Fritzing, uh, which is free off the internet. It allows you to lay out a breadboard sort of view of your uh, design. You can switch to a schematic view of the design. Uh, it even allows you to actually lay out the components on a circuit board. And there's a facility here to export that to um, the manufacturer to have it actually produced. It's quite easy to use but I'm not overly impressed with Fritzing. I just find it uh, just a bit annoying, to be absolutely honest, as far as laying out schematics. Some components here are small, some of them come large, and, and then other components over here, you end up with just a terminal strip. So not overly happy, and you can develop your own parts and things like that, and there are a lot of available, however, you know, I don't really have time to, to do that. I, and I'm thinking I'll probably move to Eagle Cad in the future to lay out circuits and do design work. However, this was what I started with. And as I say, easy to use. So it's probably not a bad starters platform, but I think I'll invest some time in learning uh, Eagle Cad. Okay, anyway, on to um, this particular circuit. In this circuit, um, first of all, I'd just like to give some credit to uh, Duke Broking, and I hope I've pronounced his name right. I'll put links to his YouTube and website in the section down below. He's done a similar sort of design, and that was the basis of this project. To be honest, I've just changed some things around the edges, moved to uh, 3D printing frame, and taken a little bit of a slant on the on the code side of things because it'll be more in line with the project that this is, you know, basically R and D for. However, let's just get started. The core of this project is the Arduino Uno. I selected that because it's basically a single board device that has all of the interfaces on it required. The motors that we'll actually be using are two stepper motors, uh, left and right hand side. Um, I'm using stepper motors because they're more repeatable. I had used DC motors in an earlier project and to be absolutely honest, tuning up the loops and everything was a real pain in the butt. Got it to actually balance okay, but yeah, just terrible. And I think that's to do with the quality of the motors that I was using. However, in these hobbyist type things, unless you're prepared to spend you know, quite a lot of money, you end up with funny gearboxes and motors that maybe aren't such good quality. So anyway, I moved to the stepper motors because the movement's a lot more deterministic. Give it a certain number of steps, it will move a certain distance do it at a certain speed and it will go at a nice repeatable speed. We've got two motor drivers here. They're DRV8825 stepper motor carriers. I've used these because it just makes controlling the stepper motors that much easier. There's current limiting on board. Basically, with the linking we've got here on the inputs, it's been set up to run at a quarter step. So both of them are set up for that. And basically from the Arduino, we can give it a direction signal off one of the digital outputs and a step signal going from a digital output. And so basically those wires are uh, coming straight from the Arduino for step and direction to the motor drivers and that's how we'll actually control the direction and speed of the stepper motors. Next thing we'll look at is the MPU 6050. It's a six axis motion tracking device. So it's got a three axis gyro built into it and a three axis accelerometer built into it. 
I wouldn't say very easy to communicate, but communication is actually over the I squared C bus from the Uno. When we look at the code, we'll go through actually interfacing over the I squared C bus and all the register sets. It's a bit of a monster device, to be absolutely honest. I'm not using anywhere near all the features of it, and we'll get into the guts of it when we look at the actual code. The Bluetooth module. Uh, this Bluetooth module, I selected this so it will allow communications from a mobile phone over Bluetooth. So I'll be building a little iOS app, probably in Objective-C or maybe Swift in Xcode, and basically just compiling that to run on my iPhone and probably iPad as well, I guess. Uh, just to control the movement of the bot, forward, reverse, left, right, so we'll take a look at that down the track as well once we've got the thing to actually balance. Uh, you'll note that we actually have a resistor that's in the transmit line from the Bluetooth module. This is here to provide some isolation because we've actually got the USB interface on board the UNO and it uses the same transmit and receive pins. So there's the potential there when we plug in the programming port you have that and the Bluetooth module acting on the receive pin on the UNO. So we've just put that resistor there to provide some isolation so we can actually program the device and also monitor on the serial port if need be. Oh, that's the other point. With that Bluetooth module, probably actually pass some information back to the app as well, maybe some battery voltage and things like that and maybe some debugging type information on the gyro and accelerometer. Okay, so they're the major components. Uh, apart from that, we have a battery pack here running it through a switch and I've put a fuse there as well. That primarily will be feeding straight onto the uh, stepper driver boards and will also be linking off to uh, the V on the Uno. All the other five volts for the other components will actually be derived by the UNO's regulator on board. So the battery voltage will be going into the in and then the 5 volt signal will actually be used to feed the other logic devices. One other thing I should mention, we've got a couple of other resistors here which are basically just forming a voltage divider on the battery voltage and we're feeding that into one of the analog inputs on the UNO. So we'll be monitoring the battery voltage. These lithium batteries don't like to be discharged past a certain point. So once it gets to a certain point, we'll basically shut down the motor drive. And I'm thinking we'll probably send an alert over the Bluetooth to the mobile phone that's controlling it. So that's basically a rundown on the circuitry. As I say, when we look at the code, we'll look at communicating with all the different devices in more depth, but there we go. So breadboard view, schematic view, and you know, for this project, even though I'm not going to build an actual circuit board for it, I just laid everything out just as a bit an exercise in seeing how easy it was to use. I, I will actually publish this Fritzing file so anyone can grab it if they do want to and create a circuit board. The circuit board could probably be finessed a little bit further but essentially it's designed to be a shield for the UNO so these pins basically lay out perfectly with the UNO. You could probably, as I say, lay it out a little bit, uh, a little bit differently, move this fuse back onto the main board, a couple of terminals for the switch and again for the battery and you know, probably fit it on a board the same size as the Adreno. At the moment, it's just it would create a board just a little bit bigger than the actual uh, Adreno. But anyway, as I say, I'll publish this, and if anyone's interested, they can download it and potentially create a circuit board. Okay, I'll sign off from this now, and the next one we'll see will be a construction video.